Welcome to Wilcom Embroidery Fonts Learning Center, where you will learn creative ways to use your ESA fonts and ESA glyphs. Today, let's explore what flexi shapes are and how to use them. Flexi shapes are simple shapes made up of one object with a single stitch direction. Flexi shapes can be resized into large objects. Use these simple shapes and a lot of imagination and you can create anything. Let's open Hatch and see what flexi shapes can do. You will find the flexi shapes under the lettering tab. All flexi shapes have an FS after their name that indicates their flexi shapes. Today we'll be using the shape stars. And we will open the insert character tool. We will scroll down and we will use the keystroke I today. With our flexi star on our screen, you will notice that it is one object and there is only one stitch direction. Right now, this flexi shape only has two fill options, the satin stitch or the tatami stitch. If we turn on the auto split feature, you'll notice that the satin stitches are very wide and it would not stitch out properly. Let's unlock the secrets of the flexi shapes. First, we're going to duplicate this shape three more times. So right click and duplicate and duplicate again and one more time. We will also change the color of each of these stars. We will now hide these bottom three stars so we can concentrate on this top one. So if you select the shift key, key and select these three, then right click and select hide selected. Now we just have access to this first star. We need to go to edit objects and break apart. When you break apart the flexi fill, this opens up all these new object properties that will be available to it. So with this star, what we're going to do is we're going to change this to a tatami and we were going to lighten up the density. So we'll put 1.2 millimeters here, travel on edge, and we will remove the underlay. Now we have a nice loose fill on our star. Now go down to the green star. We will select it and right click and hide unselected. So now that will hide the yellow star and now we can work on the green star. We will break apart this star to open up all the object properties. With this one, we are going to change this to a motif. When you select motif, go down to single motifs. And when you select the very bottom down arrow, this whole box of motifs pops up and you can put this on your screen and audition each different style of motif. We are going to use the curve 14 motif today. And it creates a pretty little swirly pattern on that. So star number two is complete. Now we'll move on to star number three, left click on it right click and hide unselected. We will break this star apart. And for this one, we are going to change it to an outline. And then we will make it a satin stitch. But you can see right here that this looks a little bit funny. So we can change those if we select that to a triple run. And we will do this, the same for the remaining four. These triple run stitches will be on the inside of the star. So I'm going to change them from red to the motif color. And we will move them directly below the motif stitching by selecting this up arrow. And it will move those objects up one space just right below the motif. That way the motif will stitch out in green and then the outlining stitches will stitch out in green like to check the object properties on the satin stitch for the star and you could see that it's a tatami. I would like to change it to a zigzag and an edge run. I'd also like to check the start and stop position of the satin stitches. Tap H on the keyboard for reshape. You'll notice that the start and stops do start and stop directly in this very tight corner. With the tie-ins and tie-offs, it sometimes can create a little knot 
and it might not stitch out properly. So if you just left click and drag them to a new position right on the inside of the star, this will stitch out great. Finally, the last star. For this one, we are going to use the Create Outlines and Offset tool and select Offset Outlines. We're going to have the offset set at 4 millimeters and 2 offset counts and make sure that Include Holes is not selected and click OK. Now there are two nice offset lines outside of the star. We don't need this one anymore, so we'll just simply delete it. For this first offset, we will change this to a satin stitch, set it to 250. We will change it to green, and we will also change the underlay again to the zigzag and the edge run for nice clean stitch out and double check that start and stop position by tapping the H key. Here it's on an inside corner, so we'll just move these to the outside edge. When the little hand is over it, it means that you've grabbed the start and stop positions. So that one looks good. So finally this star, let's change this to a motif stitch. For this one we will use arrow 5, and I would like a little more definition on that, so with it selected, we will come up to Digitize and Repeat. Now this will stitch out twice, giving it a hand-stitched look. And let's change that one to yellow. Now we're ready for the big reveal. Let's click Unhide All. And here's our pretty new design using our flexi-shaped stars today. Here are a few more ideas on how to use the flexi shapes. Use your state's flexi shape to create this cute pillow design. In a future lesson, I'll show you how to use this simple shape and turn it into this mug rug. Thanks for watching. Expand your embroidery creativity today by checking out all the amazing ESA fonts, ESA glyphs, flexi fills, and quilters collection on WilcomEmbroideryFonts.com. Thanks for watching. If you want to make your embroidery life easier, be sure to hit the subscribe button below to be notified of new tips and tricks videos, giveaways, and more. Plus, if you want to try Hatch Embroidery software free for 30 days, or you already own Hatch and you'd like to download a free ESA font for it, click one of the links in the description below to learn more now. The next step of your embroidery legacy starts here with ours.